Alrighty. Um, uh, probably just put background in like the description of the video, whatever. But this is basically just Ted and I are going to go through clay really thoroughly um, and make sure that we both understand it well. Um, because I really think it can be understood uh, without too much like it doesn't take that long uh and it's a lot easier to decide what to do with it when you understand mechanically how it's all implemented so i'm gonna start with data structures um yeah interrupt me at any time but raft is uh is all the data in clay and most of that really is just the first three. That's the main data in clay. Um, basically, it's domestic desks, foreign desks, and then our object store. Actually, probably makes sense to start by looking at the object store, um, which is map of hash to commits, map of hash to blobs, which are files. Um, this works just like in Git or anywhere else. That's not the blob. This is the blob. Uh, this is on the tombstoning branch because I've cleaned up various things. Yep. And so you'll notice some aspects from that, um, which can, you know, which is actually probably good because it, uh, helps you see where, like what changes that actually implies. So. For files right now, we have three ways to represent them. Well, really two ways to represent an actual file. Um, you can represent them directly. So th th they all keep their own hash inside them as a cache, which is questionable, but it's there. Um, yeah, I mean, the general principle is if you have you know a map with keys and values, then you generally don't want the key in the value also. Right. Um, so violate that, but yeah. yeah, I went through looking through cause I, I, I simplified this, this whole thing was like, this was a mark and low before and I, I, I simplified that okay. somewhat, uh, here, but, um, getting rid of the lobe was actually a little bit like, well, it means the various things you send over the wire are going to be a little bit of pain. And so I haven't done it, but probably worth doing. So how did you simplify deltas here? This doesn't make sense to me. So this um, was Mark Loeb before. Yeah. Um, and so uh, what I did, because the, the idea is this is the mark of your parent. So, okay, this is so the way it is now is this is your own hash. This is the hash of your parent. And this is the diff. With, with direct ones, it's just this, yeah. is, this is the data. Data are always stored as pages which is mark and the data without the type um, because the type could change, like is a lot more likely to change and isn't really part of the, the data per se, whereas the mark name and the data itself is, which is why incidentally, uh, if you look at uh, oops, page to lobe, so it's worth understanding what exactly is in that hash. It's a hash of the mark and the data Full page um, yeah right so right. if it's, if it's, if it's a different mark you'll have a different hash different type that doesn't make a difference type is not real from this perspective right i mean i think this is this is a nice piece of sanity in clay right that yeah. the types are always ever just um derived not not a right. primary state yeah exactly it's a good principle right so well and i guess uh, and then this was for the benefit uh, of the viewer you might want a basic idea of, of blob here because sure. I, I know how it works actually but but a listener probably does not before we get into how you change actually, it i just say like how do you how do you read it right what does direct mean what does delta mean and then how does sure. this get um added yeah so like when do you so a blob is is a file in clay or more more specifically is like a structurally shared file in clay so if you have the same file in two different places it's going to be this 
represented as the same blob. Um, and the most common version of that is is a direct blob, which is just a page, like we were saying. It's a mark and the and the data as a as a noun. Um, but it can be represented as a diff on another blob, either diff on on a direct blob or a diff on an, on another delta. Um, and when you do that, if you want to convert, it, 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 if you want to take a blob and kind of uh, interpret it as as a page, like kind of reduce it down to the data itself, um, then you have to go look up its parent, um, see what it is, potentially recurse you know, several levels, and then you have the original one and you apply these diffs. And so that ends up looking like, uh, I assume it's called blob to page. It's, some, or it's probably called lobe to page or something. Uh, yeah, lobe to page. So it's this kind of recursion where you say, okay, I take a lobe, I'm trying to produce a page. All the stuff in Ford uh, per, uh, keeps a cache in its state, and so that gets produced along with it. But um, it's really just taking a lobe and producing a page. And so if it's direct, we have the page, we just produce that, nub is the cache. Um, if it's a delta, then you get its parent, get the diff, you you recurse to figure out what the parent is, and then you run packed, which is one of the arms in the mark, with the parent page that you got from the recursion and the diff that you got from R in the, in the blob, and uh, that gives you that gives you actually a cage. That applies the diff the to the it applies yeah. the diff to the parent and gets you yeah yeah exactly. and puts a slapped a type on it so you have a cage, not a not just a page. Right. Right. One of the things that changed with um, with tombstoning is, of course, you might have asked for a lobe that doesn't have data, in which case we crash here. This is a similar version, except it produces units everywhere. You know, you just a anywhere that, that you were doing this before, you have to now be aware that it may not. Uh, you may not have the page yeah. that's associated with that lobe, but we do consider you to still have that yeah. blob in some sense. So That's um, pretty much one question I've always uh, Go ahead. I, I, have, so I have two questions about blobs that I've had for years, actually. Yeah. Um, one is, uh, like, how do you know whether something's going to be stuck in there as a delta versus as a direct? Um, and a sort of related question is, why do we bother storing deltas in the blob store and not just store direct store everything as direct? Right. So. The answer to the first is you can do either. Um, in practice, uh, commits use direct, like meaning if you run bar commit, then it's gonna it's gonna come in as a direct always. If you use info, so if you use um, like you know tar path in the dojo and write it that way, it's gonna come in as a direct. Um, if you do a merge then if it was a non-trivial merge so for example if you had a uh, you know a hoon file where it where you changed different lines uh, on the two different branches that will generally come in as a delta um and that's mostly just because the those merges like the, the merge functions operate on deltas and so you you end up with a delta or you end up with it with a diff uh and we just put that in directly partially it's in there just to make sure that we keep these code paths warm um i mean it's also just always been that way uh it would be very straightforward to just run this and then do that as as a direct it's actually would be and like straightforward the to, as yeah it'd be yeah. straightforward to just loop through your entire um uh, object store and turn everything into directs um and so the uh in the past, we stored lots more stuff as deltas. We, we we took every commit and tried to store it as a delta, if at all possible, which was pretty much always possible, um, which uh, had some really annoying um, uh, performance characteristics because we didn't reverse the deltas, which is what you really should do. And so 
uh, we always had a cache at n, like at revision number n, but we didn't for n minus one. And so you had to then play that from one all the way up to n minus one, and it was slow and annoying. Um, right. But it didn't matter that still much. True. We, we didn't have errors yeah. that long. Go ahead. Which is still true if you, uh, if you, you know, if every modification that you've made, if each like revision that you've made to a particular desk is done with a delta, then you still, have, we still have this issue, right? Like, that yeah, it's that's true. Over and then for deltas to, to recalculate that, the value at that revision. Right. And, and you actually, it doesn't I don't even think that you could, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you, you couldn't even do the, the flipping them around uh trick anymore because um there are these w without changing clay because we have a rule that if you had a direct and someone tries to put in a delta you leave it as direct um and the basic reason for that rule so is you don't overwrite an old value basically well especially you don't overwrite an old direct with a delta um okay because it if you do, then you might end up creating uh, deltas that are in a cycle, um, which. Oh yeah, bad. that was a bug we had. Wow. Yeah, it was a bug we had for a little while, um, and the solution was <laughs> be very, very careful Stop. about uh, making sure that not, <laughs> that nothing outside, like that 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 everything inside of clay handles that correctly, and nothing outside of clay is allowed to handle that incorrectly, or at least to the degree possible. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and so well, the, that, the, 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 the reason... convert an Go old ahead. delta to a direct? You said that we can't convert an old direct to a delta, but can we convert an old delta to a direct? Like, is so that something that Clay does? That uh, generally does not happen, because generally the rule is what what is already there, we don't overwrite if it's already there. Um, there's... Uh, that rule has to change a little bit it, with tombstoning, because... Um, you do want to overwrite what was already there if what was already there was dead. Um, yeah. And so this is just like a, you know a, a replacement for uni that okay. that has a yeah but that's, conflict. That's actually pretty similar to the sort of like scry rule. Like you, yeah. you can go from existing to non-existing, and you can go from non-existing to existing, but you can't go from existing to a different existing. Yeah. Yeah. That um, that part seems that seems right. same. Right. So the the reason to have deltas in theory is, you know, Hoon.hoon Hoon is I don't know fifteen thousand lines or whatever. Um, and I don't know exactly how big that is, but let's say it's I don't think it's a megabyte, but we'll say it's a megabyte. And um, even if it's a hundred kilobytes, right? You if you change one line in that um you want that to not be another 100 kilobytes i mean who know who doesn't change very fast yeah. but plenty of other things change much faster mm -hmm. um and uh hoon files are stored as as chords and so that is what would happen even now and that is what happens even now um every time you you commit those which is not ideal it's actually you know, text is not that big anyways, so it mostly works out, but you kind of want the ability to say, because if you do store that as, as a delta, then changing one line is going to take like 100 bytes instead of, you know, 100 kilobytes or, or whatever it is. Um, right. And so that's potentially a really useful thing to have. The other general approach to that is... Um, try to rely a lot more on structural sharing. Um, right. And so... Instead of having you, a sort of... Yeah, instead of, in that case, basically, instead of having a an explicit, like, diff, you would have an implicit sharing where you'd have two nominally separate values, but actually, in practice, they would at least hopefully share a memory and the interpreter. Right. At the least, after a meld, they would, although... I, yeah. you, you try to preserve that as much as you can. You have to be careful with Correct. this, though. I did I did run through a version of this that used uh, wanes instead of chords. Um, yeah. And so a, a wane is a list of chords. 
one for each line. And uh, it actually works a lot worse than I expected because, well, in part because every, uh, like even just storing something as a Wayne adds 24 bytes to each line. And if each line yeah. is on average like 30 or 40 bytes anyways, then you end up doubling your memory usage right off the bat. Um, and with a list, if you change anything near the beginning of the file, you're reallocating the whole thing. And the whole thing is, you know, 50% bigger anyways. And so you end up, you know, d depending on your, your workflow, but most of the time you end up using more memory. And well, so it's, it's, you can do better so you than a list. At the end of the file. If you change something at the end of, at the end of a file, then, then you... Sorry. Yes. 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 You're correct. If you change it at the end of the file, it is the is the the bad case. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. Because you end up having to redo all the cells all the way up. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can do better than a list, even just a tree, like something structured like a like an ordered map or a queue or something. Um, yeah. Will work a lot better. But um, and like. There may be, I mean, ropes is the the thing that comes to mind. Um, that's right. probably doable. And my guess is that we're going to, at some point, want to lean into that and get rid of deltas altogether. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah, but, well, it's interesting to note the like the different kind of um, like architectural pressures that it puts. Right. So, like right now, like one benefit that I hadn't thought of until hearing this um, of the way we do it now is that. You, your diff type can be anything and your value type can be anything and as long as you're actually storing diffs um then you don't have to like put a lot of attention into making your data structures like share a lot of structure like across two different versions um and so it, it does yeah. sort of make it easier to kind of throw a couple of data structures out there, like, yeah, here's my value, or here's my diff, and optimize them then rather than for revision control. Um, although then there's this kind of secondary issue that if you if you do rely heavily on storing deltas, then if you expect to be able to access old data quickly, then you're probably going to be out of luck. Um, so there's kind yeah. of a trade-off there and then yeah like the other the other sort of things like well maybe that pressure that we would have put on us if we got rid of deltas would be virtuous because then we'd be you know, designing things to share structure which is sort of how everything else in urbit works um right i mean and, and there's also yeah it it is uh harder to have a uh, a heuristic that does the right thing in the presence of tombstoning and deltas together because you're like well Okay, I have this file that has a hundred revisions, and should I be should I tombstone several of the, of the early revisions, and then delta uh, the top of that, or like right, how, how do I know when it's safe to to tombstone a file is gets a little harder in, in the presence of deltas in general, but I mean yeah, right, right. So actually, does your tombstoning have some sort of constraint on it so that if you try to delete like a delta that other things depend on? or direct that other that there are deltas that depend on it, that it doesn't actually delete it or does it warn you or something or like um yeah so the so there's there's two basic entry points into how i do tombstoning right now one is uh the like low level try to tombstone this hash or one that's on top of that that's literally just run that for every hash so it's like try to tombstone everything possible and that one has the rule that if i'm the base of a delta then i never get tombstoned um yeah and okay that, that means you can actually run that multiple times, run the you know tombstone everything multiple times, and it might clean up some more because it might have later on tombstoned the delta Ooh. that you're the parent of, which, eh, I mean, this That's is, annoying. you know, th this is trivially solvable by just running it until the result is the same as the result of the previous one. But yeah, and like, slightly less trivially solvable by tracking the dependencies in the opposite direction, right? Yeah, um, that that stuff's just kind of the like, you know, don't care too much about performance, just want to try and save a bunch of memory real quick. And really is more just like, I want to run that so that 
for the next, you know, un until this gets released, I can be running on moons that have all the, they have virtually everything tombstoned. Um, and so I can, you know, hopefully flush out more problems. Um, so the other entry point is you set a policy that says, um, these are the kind of things that I want to tombstone or like, sorry, these are, are, are the things that I need to have exist or that I don't want you to tombstone, which is subtly different, but, um, and that uses copy and garbage collector and the copy and garbage collector says anytime that I know that, that the, like, um, anytime I come to a blob that I'm trying to preserve, if it's a Delta, I go ahead and try to preserve its parent as well, which maintains that invariant that you like you, you should never have yeah, it's recursively copy all the things that the delta points at right yeah. right and we we should have uh like sanity checks that are like yeah you should never after a park or after a uh, garbage collection or something you should never have orphans and that's actually pretty fast to check okay wait so how okay so now i understand the copy and garbage collector how does the other garbage collector work does it have to search through the whole space to find if anything points at this at this one um, must, right? Yeah, so it just recurses over all the lobes onto this, which says re remove this lobe. And it says, okay, if the lobe doesn't exist, we move on. If it's already tombstone, we move on. Um, and then we go through all of the um, local desks and somewhere, I assume, the foreign desks. Although it's possible that I forgot to check the foreign desks <laughs> um wait because this wait where does the desks come from yeah yeah i i forgot to check the foreign desks here um er, yeah um but it'll, it'll be the same thing just get it's just a different way to access to get the desks and then you say okay that file is actually used here and so you can't um there specifically it it does that at it should only be doing that when yeah it does that at 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 so that the, the which is, is the, like the latest um, yeah that's the latest right so yeah, yeah so let let dot dom is the highest version number um and so it's saying if it's at the highest version number of any of these desks then we know op um Otherwise, yeah. we we go through. You can see why this should be slow, but it's actually not that slow. Um, and uh, check through the the entire blob store for just linearly to see if there's any delta where we're the parent. And if there is, then we complain about that. Um, otherwise, we go ahead and mark it as a tombstone. Cool. Yeah, this makes sense. Well, what's the order of magnitude? I mean, like there aren't that many files in clay, right? It's like what on the order of a uh, one or two thousand, right? Um, yeah, because I mean, it's probably maybe two hundred revisions of base times, uh, well, not times, but like where the you know, there's like I don't know a hundred files, and each of those revisions probably changes on average like four files, something like that. So yeah, something like yeah. a thousand. Um, so it, yeah, it really just doesn't take that long. Um, there's probably just about as many commits as there are blobs, uh, just because on, on a moon like that, or, you know, you have five desks, most, mostly all the same commits. Um, yeah. And, and then most changes are only changing a file or two. I imagine. Right. Um, yeah. Um, but we're probably getting ahead of ourselves in terms of estimating that uh, because the data structures will make it clearer. Yeah. How do you do that? Find that? Yeah. Oh, so I guess I have another question related to this Delta stuff, yeah. which is, uh, like it, this sounds to me like it's it's the same or a similar strategy to Git because Git does some sort of packing for its files, right? That yeah. And even though it's nominally you know snapshot-oriented, um, the actual data storage does use diffs, right? Yeah, it, it uses at a high level a very similar mechanism. It's it's a lot more uh, flexible in terms of like repacking, and it has all kinds of heuristics for determining whether it's worth packing. Um, but it but it does have a very similar mechanism. And then anytime that it actually needs to access the file, 
it uses something very similar to our lobed page where it's just yeah yeah although i guess you know it's probably not doing it at a semantic level the way this is um right it's just, i imagine it's doing it with um, lines. yeah so instead of page it uses um uh it's probably not a c string but it might be a c string um yeah. and and it's it's it, like it's specific to uh text it diffs. Is. well it's, it's actually not totally specific to text diffs right it can it, it it has a little bit of an understanding of this is a binary file and so i'll treat that differently than a text file but that's pretty much it. oh really okay yeah so it actually with the binary file it, it, uh yeah you can you can put in your dot get something uh it's not dot get rc but it's something like that um uh in your uh in your repo that this kind of file is a like i, I think we, we even might have done that for like jam where we're like this kind of file is a binary uh, it, file it, and so you should not try I to see. do a diff um interesting okay. but i think that's the only concept it has is binary versus text if i'm not mistaken yeah although something else that's interesting there is with jam if you did it you could potentially do a bitwise diff and store and save some. Save potentially, some yeah, yeah, but but you would have to know to do that bitwise and not um, on new lines. Not bitwise, yeah, yeah. Bite Unless wise. you happen to jam something that is, uh, well, yeah. it, it's, it's not likely to be aligned. Out of eight, uh, it, it would have to be aligned, uh, which twelve point five percent. Maybe of the time it is. Time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, this all makes sense to me. Right. So those are blobs. Those are files. There's also commits, um, which are worth understanding very precisely. The yakis, they have only three items in them. This is uh, a hash of itself. It's not the first item for whatever reason, but um, so it has a list of parents, which can be zero, one, two, three, four, could be any number of parents. Um, in general, zero means very likely that it came from a pill. Uh, one means it was probably came from like bar commit or something. If there's two, it was probably came from bar merge or bar sync or bar OTA or something like that. That's, you know, that when people talk about a merge commit, they generally just mean it has two parents. Um, or in some cases, it has more than two parents. Uh, for us, so, you only really create those with bar fuse, but yeah. Actually, this reminds me that uh, you said that it's common for uh, deltas to only be used early. Like, Usually you only see deltas these days if there was a non-trivial merge that produced the result. But I yeah. uh, I think, so I remember needing to build um, the like hard code, the Kelvin mark into clay uh, last summer. Yeah. I'm doing the software distribution work and I was surprised that I seem to like always need to handle... Um, the delta case for the even the sys kelvin blob well you um, always need to which have a case for it but did you but if if you zap zapped it would it yeah i originally just wrote it as a zap zap thinking like all right well let me just get this working without like trying to you know run the delta um and then it like it, it, it would crash a lot um huh. which made me think that even trivial merges were producing deltas and i was a little surprised by that um, well, we'll we'll get to the merge section, and you'll see how such a thing can be can be checked okay. uh, quite quickly. Yeah. Actually, um, uh, that uh, does remind, remind me, though, back on blobs, real quick. That the other yeah. reason that deltas can be nice instead of just doing everything direct is they can make it much cheaper to send stuff over the wire if you don't have a, a robust grain system, um, I, which we don't at this point, but. If you don't have structural sharing over the wire, essentially, which is what hopefully a grain system would get you toward, then you might be sending, you know, a hundred copies of a hundred kilobyte file that are all very, very similar to each other, and that takes ten megabytes. Yeah. 
So it's okay. a, yeah. So does that mean if you ask for a file over the wire now, like the way you'll get it is just either Delta or Direct, depending on what's in Clay's Bob store, or, or does it, or does Clay ever try to like convert it? I believe that it only does whatever's in the Blob store, but it certainly could convert it and probably in some cases could do that quite profitably. Uh, okay. All right. I was just, yeah, I was just curious how that worked. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I it, it almost certainly does it uh, just with what's in your Blob store right now. Okay. Yep. All right, so Yaki's... They have a list of parents. It is a list and not a set. Uh, the rule in general is you should never do anything really truly semantic based on the ordering of the list, but it's very convenient for being able to say, I wanna see all the stuff that was merged into me and not the stuff that I was merged into. And like, so there's a, a convention that if, if I'm on desk A and I merge in desk B, then the first parent is from desk A and the second parent is from desk B. It's the same convention Git okay. uses, makes a lot of tooling uh, easier, although we don't actually use that much of the tooling. But yeah. Yeah, um, okay, that makes sense. The other thing it has, well, I'll just go in order. Um, as a map of path to lobe, that's all the files at that commit. Lobe is of course a hash of a blob. Um, this is a map of path to that which has, you know, certain performance characteristics that yeah, I was gonna good, ask about certain those. ones that are not ideal. Um, probably should be more like a try. We have a lot more. Uh, yeah, like we, we, we use tries a lot more than we did back then. Um, but in practice, we haven't run into that being a performance problem yet. And so it's been OK. But mm -hmm. I do think something that you can uh, more easily take a subdirectory from, basically, um, yeah. like more naturally instead of just filtering on it, which is what we do now, uh, is probably a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's a very general question about Clay is like, you know, some things are done as try, you know, uh, like folder tries, and then mm -hmm. some things are done as maps. And yeah, like, is there are we sort of solid on that reasoning or is that just kind of historical accident or is it like a lot of more things were done with maps, but now we actually, as of very recently, you wrote a generic try data structure. And so we should probably just replace a lot of stuff with that now that we have it. Um, a lot of it's an event. accident of history. Um, there's, there's been this long evolution of uh, like, the, so, so the current cache, which, which we'll get to at some point of, like so, the yeah the the cache of the of the current state of a of a desk is stored as a try, and this is stored as a map. And like originally, everything was stored as a try, and then it switched to to this arrangement with the idea to eventually move everything to maps. Uh, but that was really okay. My my memory is a little hazy because it was right at the beginning of when I was started working on Clay that either I saw this decision and I was like, that seems fine, I'll keep it, or I made this decision. Uh, if I made the decision, it would be because of my general lack of familiarity with tries at the time. Um, yeah. And I was just We're like, yeah, map of path is fine. Yeah. Go ahead. Or there, weren't, like, there weren't like uh, sort of convenience functions for tries either, right? Like, there were right. only a couple of them. Yeah, so whereas like, working with maps is easy, it's straightforward, and it's... Uh, yeah. It's I never level. caused the problem. Uh, the 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 merge code just uses all the like uh, that. That's where uni and diff and, and some of those uh, map functions came from is building these merge functions because they use those all the time. Okay. And yeah, doing that okay. with tries is just like well, yeah, you could do it. You just need to build a uni for tries and a diff for tries, yeah. which is all going to be doable and actually probably pretty straightforward. But it's you know yeah. just another set of things to do. Right. So yeah, that's the data in a commit. Uh, that's again, the hash of itself. Uh, they also have the date that they were, um, that they were created. I mean, you can just set that date to anything you want. But it, it was um, surprising me that they have like a, uh, a Pat P user actually, like who created this. Yeah. There's a question of like, cause once it, it like, 
you could say it actually really should only have the data and not even date should be in there. But once you put in a little bit of metadata, then you're like, well, maybe it should have the user, maybe it should have whatever. And and the answer there in part is that uh, I never needed the user and so I never added it. Uh, date, you can kind of tell, was added after, it was originally just these three and it was like, we'll put the yeah. hash at the end. And then it was like, actually and I want to add like something else to it. And then it was like, but I don't want to change the, all the R's, which obviously I should have just done. We were breaching all the time back then. It kind of looks like the taco but, was added later too. Actually. It's possible actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. that the, 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 the taco was added before I got there and the date was added after. I think, okay. um, but, yeah, but uh, you don't strictly need the taco, right? Because you could regenerate right. that from the map path lobe. Is that right? right? So uh, it's worth looking. This is so uh, page the lobe shows you where the the lobes come from. Uh, make yaki shows you where tacos come from. So okay. you pass in a make yaki, basically P, Q, and T, right? You, you pass in the parents, the data, and the date. And we hash those up and produce an actual Yaki. Um, and so. And then that, stick that, that in answers the several field. questions. Okay. Right. Put, put yeah. it in that field and, and there it goes. So it is notable that, that means, like, so we, we often refer to send Z hashes of commits. And a send Z hash of a commit is a hash only of this. Um, yeah. And so an actual. Because you want the right. send, Z, send Z to be the same no matter what data it was. Just really a right. of the data. When, no matter what data it was and no matter who, what parents it has. Right, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the data. Um, a, a commit, the date is, again, questionable, but it does go in it right now. Um, yeah. The parents, you actually do want in it because there is a difference right. between a commit that goes, uh, you know, like if you, for example, make a commit and then reverse commit, uniquely. they're not the same. Because they have different parents, yeah, even played. if they have the same data. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, you you might so be able to come up with a system that does it all based on send Z hashes, um, but it's a lot harder because it's not a DAG anymore. Because unless you just say you can never make a commit that's the same as a previous commit you made on the same branch, which would be <laughs> bad. Yeah. Right, and I guess. You could potentially even imagine sticking a commit message into the Yaki, right? You could, and and Git does this. Um, Git also has has the author author's email address. A few of those other things go right into the Yaki. Yeah, um, which is not crazy. Um, but you're thinking about doing that a different way, though, right? Yeah. So the way that those are done, and and, and they're worth looking at uh, to, to some extent after. Um, after getting through the rest of the data structures, but like the little preview is that they are done as a file uh, at the top level. It's like a desk.story or something like that. Um, and it has something close to a map of, of taco to commit message. Uh, it's slightly different because it's... Um, it's actually a jug. So it's, it's a map of taco to set of commit messages. We do that so that, uh, you know, usually there'll only be one item in there, but uh, you can do conflict-free merges and such because uh, you really don't want to have your conflict, like to have your merge held up by something that happened in your commit messages or whatever. Um, uh -huh. So what, like, what might be? How would you end up with more than one commit message on a particular commit? Um, so the way that's done, where where you have it as a um, as a just a file of, that is a map of taco to commit message, means that you can go back and change that for any previous commit. So this allows you to do things like. Uh, amend commit messages, uh, squash commit messages, yeah. to some well, to to a limited extent, like some kinds of of rebasing. Both of those are considered rebasing from a Git perspective. You're not going to be able to actually reorder them because you're not like you're not moving the files around. But you're just doing it on this on level of commit messages. But still, um, and so that kind of thing should be fairly rare, but it may happen. Um, and if it does happen, then you want to. 
uh, you want to be able to represent that somehow instead of just so basically like all of the so basically if you change the commit message later when you do some kind of uh, cherry pick or rebase type operation uh yeah like like you, so like for example if you if you have the old one there too so you have like the old one and the new one is in a set is that a... uh yeah exactly very very much like how how darks does all its merges where it's like we're gonna take anything that like basically in, in instead of like what 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 darks does is it says all merges always succeed because we don't store files as a list of lines we store them as, I forget what they call the data structure, but it's basically a list of set of lines. Um, okay. And yeah, like anytime the that, that there's a, right. yeah, it's a push out, exactly. Um, and so it's like, yeah, if there's a conflict, then it's like, well, it's not exactly a conflict, or I mean, or we could say there is a conflict, it's, it's just it's the conflict is represented not. here, and you could print yeah. that with little gar gar gash, you know, it's gar gar and gal gal or whatever. Um, but, um, but it isn't like crash the function or something and the function still yeah. follows all the laws that you expect it to. Except for the, the law of producing a, a file, a file that you can actually use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So that's what is currently in, in commits um and that's the object store and that's that's like all of the i mean really the, the blob like the the blob part of that is all of the data and the yaki part of that is all of the metadata and then the rest of it's so just meta metadata it's just keeping these yep. these uh commits organized and so that's rang um so remember raft is our entire clay state and so the next two sections are domestic desks and foreign desks. So room is domestic desks. Terminal deck doesn't matter. Um, map of desk name to dojo. That's about what you'd expect. This usage of dojo, it, it's, it's confusing because it's like terminal duct and then, oh, there's a dojo. This clearly has something to do with terminal. Why? It's clay. The answer is this usage of dojo predates dojo is terminal yeah. and this is like a useless thing that really shouldn't exist but probably well, has to yeah i was gonna ask like so there's there's just one room per ship right yes correct yeah, yeah and so it's a little weird to have hun like inside of the room as opposed to just like a top level in the raft yeah it really i mean it'll get even more exciting is here for, for the foreign ones you like map of ship to rung okay what's a rung well it's this tuple this buck coal <laughs> uh, yeah but we'll, right it's really a we'll tuple, get to that yeah it, it, like the the answer i'm pretty sure is that there was more stuff in room and then we managed to get rid of almost all of it and then you know yeah, yeah. these the, these okay. names go way back um so yeah. it really is basically just a map of desk to dojo the dojo is everything that matters about a local desk. Um, you could call it a loco. A loco, yeah, that could work. Um, at a high level, that's your, your subscribers for this desk, the actual state of the desk, and then read permissions, write permissions, and the state of your fuse, um, which is... Yeah, not terribly important. So the the main data here, well, the main data is the dome. Subscribers is like second most important, and then the others are maybe worth looking at, or might even just skip them uh, because they're not really on the, well, the critical time, path of anything. The permission pretty simple. Yeah, uh, I, I, at I some think point, I would be all the fuse stuff actually, because I mean, I've, I've watched you know, oh, yeah. I've watched some videos at, and. Yeah, like the video that I think you and um, is his name Ragu. Yeah, uh, Ragu. Um, who uh, built that, and then uh, so I watched I watched some videos on it and, and heard you describe it. Looked at a little bit of the code, but I don't understand it very deeply. So at some point, I'd like to understand that, and 
I, I was a yeah. little surprised to find that, that had to modify the clay state to include that. Um, yeah, uh, so that guess, that will, I think, once we go through uh, the data structures and then merges, um, then Fuse is like 10 minutes to explain on top of that. Um, yeah. But, but you got to go through those first. So. Okay. Okay, so we'll look at Dome first and then look at this metadata around it. Dome is one of the most important types here. Um, and it re represents desk state. This is also, so Dome is used for both foreign and domestic desks. Um, like the, the, the foreign desk path will have a Dome in it as well. Um, and so this is mainly... Well, it's mainly these three things. With Tombstone, I added these two that are important, but are not, like, but are metadata. Uh, the onc and these two are caches. So, uh, if we skip the caches for now and look at the main stuff here. A desk is the highest revision number they're at. So, if you made five revisions, that's going to be the number five. Um that starts at one so if if this is zero then that means the desk doesn't exist you might have a dome where that is the case because maybe you have subscribers already to a desk that doesn't exist and so the dome exists but it's but mm. let is going to be zero zero means there okay. are zero commits here and so don't try to dereference it um that's interesting a goal is a simple where you can you can send a you can send a move to an agent that doesn't exist yet and Gaul will enqueue right. it indefinitely. I often wonder whether we're going to have problems with that eventually. And we're going to need some way of basically like going in and trimming that state and like knacking it. Right. It's so like if somebody yeah. sent a, which is safe it, to do, know, right? It's, 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 it's convenient so like, to, to queue, especially for bootstrapping purposes because you don't know which app starts yeah. first or whatever, but, right. um, Oh, the other thing I was thinking pretty, is that you might want to on a per desk basis. So that if you have like agents on the same desk mm -hmm. um, that don't uh, where like, you know, one sends a move to another one before the other one has started, then enqueue it forever. Right. Um, but if it's on a different desk or foreign, then don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's potentially. potentially I don't think that's and, 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 and potentially not. I mean, it might not be a bad idea for clay as well. You might not want to maintain a big long list of foreign subscribers. I mean, uh, you know, th there isn't a concept of different desk clay as all desks, but for foreign ones, you know, you might, you might just give a, yeah. uh, some kind of a response or, well, I don't know that we have a way to actually respond to that. You just have to, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, the other side of that it, is like, yeah. this is one of the things that like people really like about zero MQ is that, um, it, it has this, a similar sort of property of like, you don't have to be very careful about which order you spin up various nodes in. And so, mm -hmm. Like, if you you know, make a request to some endpoint and it's not there yet, like when it comes up, it'll just start right. working. And that's yeah, that's yeah. Very, which know, a lot of the especially the older urban stuff like tends to have that property and it is convenient. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I do think it's a good sometimes. pattern as long as we as long as you keep it secure and have some way of like getting out of it, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. You you have to have a way to to be able to drop those because otherwise it's. It's a queue that has no way of having back pressure or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. So desk state is top revision number, a map of revision numbers to commit hashes. Uh, obviously, you, you could encode this as just a list of commit hashes, uh, which would be slower for various operations, but has all the information you need there. Um, or an or ordered map, actually. Probably order order map would be both. reasonable as well, yeah. This yeah. is written before we have ordered maps. So. That's correct. Um, but in practice, this works fine. Yeah, as, well, as long as you make sure that you don't... Um, you know, Obviously, like there, there's some implied uh, invariance here. Like There should be no revisions that are higher than let in here. There should be no uh, skips Holes. and revisions and so on. Yeah. But... Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's actually not implied by the data structures. It's just another invariant that we maintain on top. Yeah, it's not implied in the like mathematician sense of like this. 
means in <laughs> yeah. the sense of exply. Uh, it's in the it's English sense of like, it's not written there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and then uh, labels are map of label name to revision number. It's, it's a revision number, not a taco. So you actually, so it does have to be something that's on the desk, which feels probably correct, but you could see it going either way. Um, right. And then, and this also means that the, that label set is not referentially transparent. Right? Well, it is because you, um, oh, it depends on the rules that we use to update this, I guess. Yeah. There, there's a rule that says if the label already exists, don't over like then crash. Oh, there is. Okay, so yes. labels are referentially transparent. Okay, cool. Yes, they are I unfortunately they uh, don't exist across the network, which is sad. Well, they hmm. exist across the network in the sense that if you make a request for someone else, then they'll interpret it according to their labels. But if you say, sync this desk down, you won't get their labels. So you really should get their huh. labels, but oh well. Yeah, um, okay. And then here's the uh, the tombstone policies, which I don't know if we want to go into those now, but they're very, I mean, I think you have enough context that you'll know it once I, I say it. It's a try of Lubians. Okay, uh, yeah. So, it's basically saying they're not, we're holding on to various um, like folders. Right. And so the, the, the way this is done, that it's a little bit, I experimented with a few ways and I feel like this is going to actually be a fairly convenient way to do it is you can set the norm for a particular commit um and then there's a default norm that and here you, you could choose to say that, that that's used for all new ones or you could say that's used for any of them that you haven't explicitly set and i have it doing the latter um which is nice because it means you, this is usually basically empty and it makes it kind of easy to say i, I want to change this for all future ones yep. and all past ones unless i specifically froze it um and okay yeah it, you know yeah. we can have a generator that that says okay take the current norm and freeze it into here so that we don't accidentally delete stuff in the past you know there's, there's, there's all kinds of tools you can build on top of this it's not clear what's the best fundamental ones but that's the that's how it's set up right now yeah right and this stuff's very new so we might mess with it a little bit yeah um, but yeah, it seems seems reasonable as a, as yeah. a first try. I think. And then yeah. beyond that, there's just a few caches here. This is a mime cache for when you have stuff synced out to Unix, uh, because that can be potentially slow uh, to read it or write it. And so we just keep that in there. Ford cache, which we should probably cover Ford in another video, and you understand that well enough anyways. Um, the Ford cache only ever applies, B both the MIME cache and the Ford cache and the ONC cache, all of those apply only to the most recent revision. The ONC cache is, uh, is also a try. Uh, it is a try whose contents are um, lobe uh, and then cage. So what it's doing is basically it takes everything that was a page and turns it into a cage. So a cage is uh, mark type and data instead of just mark and data. So it, it uh, inflates everything into vases for easy access, which it's hard to say nowadays uh, how important that is. It might be important. I don't know. Like performance wise, but yeah. But you can also imagine ref like, factoring that differently so that basically you could have a um like part of the mark cache like you have a cache for like what's the type of that you know corresponds to any yeah. piece of marked data yeah uh and store that separately and then just cons those together right do like a look right. from the mark by cache and from you know and then grab the lobe and then uh you know right. make a cage out of that yeah that's, that's gonna be just as fast yeah. and yeah. um it's a little it seems a little cleaner to me for some reason i think it's because like you're sort of not denormalizing the data right sticking the type yeah. in every case sort of is denormalizing the data um and it doesn't yeah it doesn't like line up as clearly with like uh the different operations we might want to perform 
Yeah, basically, we never would have done that in the past because we were never disciplined enough about um, making sure that, like, marks weren't going to change out from under us and then you end up with an evil cage or something. Um, But with where we're at now, I would actually feel pretty comfortable doing that. Um, But, yeah, that's how, like, yeah, that's how that's set up. The Ankh has not really changed in a really long time. And so that's that's death state. The main thing is, yeah, a map of it. It's just a list of version numbers to taco. Although, if if you want to see simple, uh, get equivalent of this, other than like the metadata and caches or whatever it has, is uh, it's just let his taco. It's just like up oh, here's the top. That's it. Oops. Uh, Interesting. It, it, so that doesn't have have lose the, hmm? yeah. So it loses the previous. Oh, it doesn't have numbers. Right. Well, there's it, a ref. It doesn't have log. numbers. Uh, uh, the, well, the, the, the ref log is is not per branch. Um, that's per like right. checkout, or not even checkout. It's per like Git directory that you have locally. Um, oh, I didn't realize uh, that actually. Yeah. So for them, it it is just like a a branch is just a pointer to a commit. Like it, it is the hash yeah. of a commit and that, and that hash can change. Yeah, and to be a new There's no history of it. I mean, I've always right. thought that was kind of like, I understand this sort of elegance there, but it's also, this is something where I like clay a lot better. Actually. I think like having an ordered sequence of like, yeah, here's what this branch meant and here's what it means now. Um, yeah. I mean, and a, a, uh, a commit implies a partially ordered sequence uh, of its of its ancestry, right? So, yeah, but you lose all the history of what that branch meant, right? Like, yes, that's true. You don't have a sense of this branch was this, and then this branch was this, and then this branch was this. That doesn't exist. Um, Which is really annoying. Clay, it does. Yeah, right? yeah. no, it it is annoying. <laughs> if you want to say, okay, what was this branch five minutes ago? They're like, uh, parent one or parent two. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, oh no, I rebased. Oh, then you're screwed. Um, yeah. you know, it's actually like go look in the ref log. It's probably there somewhere. Um, and yeah. yeah, yeah. So one thing that that's notable here is in this list of tacos, um, we no longer require later tacos to be children of earlier, like uh, later commits to be children of earlier commits that that was a an invariant that we upheld for a long time but with fuse we stopped doing that um and so it's possible that you know the, the one at n has its whole ancestry and the one at n minus one has a whole disjoint ancestry um or a an ancestry that is mostly shared but isn't it isn't actually an ancestor of n um and so if you want to to do something like if you want to iterate over all of the commits in a dome like that that are referred to by a dome you need to go by revision by number, number by, and not by following that reference, well yeah. well you need to do both right you you need to go by by, by number and then within each number check its parents if you want to okay. touch everything for example if, if you want to say save all of the uh the blobs that are in here for being tombstoned yeah you know then you, you need to go through both of those uh and catch right. everything because otherwise it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember when I wrote uh, a helper back also about a year ago as part of the software distribution work for creating a new desk. Um, and yeah, I did it without including any parents. There's, uh, but you could also run it on an existing desk and it would just make a new commit with no parents. Right, which um, at some point, and... depending on when you did that, that that would break various things if you tried to like sync that desk over a network or something. Nowadays, that's safe to do, though. Yeah, <laughs> it might not have been safe at the time. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So that's the dome. That's the desk state. Uh, like the, the well, kind of the main state. The dome state, not really a better word for that. Um, Colt is worth looking at. 
So, cult is the subscribers that you have. And it goes a little bit backwards of how you very naively do it, but I think it makes sense. So it's drug of wove to duct. So that's a map of wove, which is a request, like a description of a request to a set of ducts. This is because you might have several people requesting the same thing. And so when that finishes, so, so they get sort of consolidated. And when the um, when that request can be fulfilled, then we give a response to all the ducts. Um, wove is, there's a whole bunch of yeah variations. We go from wove to rove to rave and so on. Um, wove is primarily a rove, I've which is an actual to, request. Go ahead. I've had to mess with this a couple times and it was always, it always felt pretty hairy. Yeah, it is somewhat hairy. Uh, it's it's especially bad if you um, if you don't go and find okay, what are the four different v's? You know, wove, rave, rove. I think there might be another one. Um, but if you keep the, like track of them in your mind, then it's like okay, it's actually not too bad. Like it's there. It's confusing for incidental reasons i think primarily um, yeah there's a cleanup pr for these isn't there that simplifies this uh is that yes uh liam has has one that, that does simplify some of this which would be nice yeah. i don't think it's on this branch but uh yeah i yeah i forget how it changes it but yeah um so a wove is primarily a rove which is the actual request it just tacks on who it's from used for permission checking like who the request is from, um, that you, you'll notice this, like this is the um, the key of this. And so if it's from different people, it ends up as different items in the jug, which is correct. Um, and then uh, there's also a version number there, which is the version of the clay protocol that was used to make the request um, so that we know how to respond with that same, like with, uh, like yeah. in, in such a way that they're going to be able to understand it. Wait, so why is the ship here in the wove and not in the, why isn't it like set of, why isn't that just in the duct basically or represented by the duct? Um, I've never really thought about it, but off the top of my head, it feels like you might want to give different answers to different people. Um, I wonder if, and well, you really shouldn't be if it's the same request. Like, if you can't read a subdirectory, you shouldn't be able to do like a send CZ right. hash or something. That's, like, that's that should definitely not thinking. have. Yeah. Yeah, we should just reject um, descriptions entirely. Yeah, I think it'd be reasonable to put it in the other. Um, in practice, I think wolves come in as like input, and we're like, well, we'll put the input on this side and the output on this side because you need to check the ship before you even install it into the mm. uh, into the request. And so, which actually means, well... You can do the same thing with the version too, though. Although, right? the proto I think you with should the also... Version, respond in this way to this ship. So you'd store like ship and... So you'd have like duct and maybe also... I mean, you sort of shouldn't need ship because the duct should store that information indirectly. Right. Uh, but then the protocol version could potentially be stored with the duct. Um, uh, that's true. It, it, yeah, it, yeah, that, that, although, that definitely could. The, the, the ship probably as well. Uh, it, it occurs to me, uh, I'm not totally sure that we correctly make sure, like, w w what you want to check is someone tries to subscribe, they're not allowed to. The, the subscription doesn't even get stored. But also, if someone tries to subscribe, they are allowed to, and then later they're not allowed to, that should either go purge their subscriptions or it should or when they're about to get fired it should it should filter them it probably does go purge them it probably works out um okay but yeah it should probably purge anyways. them really just so that doesn't have like state hanging around yeah yeah it really should um yeah yeah i think you're right the ship inversion could probably go with the duct instead of uh, and then just have rove as the actual thing which you know, would help with some stuff because as you'll see, the number of open subscriptions you have is potentially relatively costly. Um, yeah. 
Right. It means you're gonna have to iterate them through them every time you do something, right? Yeah. Every every time anything changes, we iterate through all our all our open subscriptions on that desk, and see if they're if they've been fulfilled. Stuff yeah. doesn't change very often, and the list is not ter is not terribly long. So as long as you make sure that that like so it ends up working out okay, but there you know at some point that won't scale right. Yeah. Right. So here's a request. Although sort, there's sort another of. thing there, of like you know, okay, so it doesn't scale all that well. It's like it's basically going to scale uh, essentially linearly, right? Like n log n, probably. And, and well, and and the truth is, it'll scale a lot better with content distribution because exactly, right? you so won't be you push yeah. Back at everybody and be like, hey, you got a new thing, right. and then you know they individually go and scry stuff out, and like that's not that bad. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's a couple thousand. It's like okay. Right, it's not too bad. Um, right, and so, so then there's the stored request. Um, this whole thing is a little bit more hairy than it should be. Now that I'm like looking at it from this angle, um, so a, a request that comes in from uh, you know from a warp or whatever. Uh, that's going to be a riff, which is. A desk name and a unit rave. If it's null, that means cancel it. Otherwise, uh, rave is the request. So that's it, it can be a request for a single item, a request for the next item after what we specified. It can be a request for multiple things, a request for many, which is exciting. So the is, rave is, where does rave, this is like almost the same as rove, but not the same. Right. So you understand rave because rave is how you make a request. That's that's the input right. that that's in the task. Um, okay, so Clay converts an incoming rave into a row for storing it. Right, um, and the reason it does that, or well, you look at the things that it that it adds. So for a single request, it doesn't change it. For a next request, it adds two things. Um, so next, the the semantics there, well, and the the, the mechanics there even are. You know, you, you say, what's the next change to this file after revision five? And what it'll do is it'll say, okay, let's see what it is at revision five. Let's see what it is at revision six, seven, eight, up to the present. Uh, if any of those are different than what's number five, then uh, whatever that first one is, we're going to return that result and we're going to return the version number that it came with. Or actually, that, that version is the version of the original one because the original one you might not have said five you might have said a particular time it'll coalesce that to a version um it's a unit because you might not know what that version is because it might be a time in the future but anyways that was a confusing way okay. of saying it um so the, the the thing you have to check if you have an active subscription for a send next and you just got a new change is you need to check okay now is it different because maybe they, they requested for the next one after five we're on seven it hasn't changed yet and uh commit eight comes in we now need to check okay is commit eight different from commit five and you could do it you could do that without a cache but you'd have to then run the command on on the old one and the new one and so we just cache the result of the old one so we're saying this is what we're waiting until it's different than this. And this this mood here, like the actual the sort of the request contained in the syntax is basically like any any kind of scry, is that right? Like Yeah, it's care case and path. And we're, okay, we're already we're, we're desk, already within a ship and a desk one, already. So it's, it's just it's, one of them. It's a beam basically. It's a decomposed beam. A rotting beam. Yeah, right. Um. Uh. Yeah. Plus a care. Uh, Very, right, yeah, right, you can treat yes. it as a beam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, that's true. A care is not a beam. It's a care and a beam. And then. Yeah. So it's basically you're saying that this is really like a scry notification system of sorts, right? It's like yeah. I want to do this. I want you to let me know any like any time in the future, or like. Or in the past, actually, but like anytime mm -hmm. after when 
because the next says start at some uh, start at some commit at some case, yeah, or start, start at case more generally, yeah, and then like tell me like what's the next change in the this scry result as you go forward in time, right? Which which is different kind than of, you can do kind of a Galaxy brand sort of area to run. <laughs> it's like, like, why do we support this? <laughs> well, yeah, because the, the 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 other way that you can get something similar and that we use in various contexts, uh, especially because Next doesn't work over the network. Just increment the revision. Although I think we fix it. Thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Is 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 you you can do a sing for the next revision number, which is different because it, uh like you um you'll hear it even if it hasn't changed. Yeah. That over the network could be slow if you're having to actually download okay. the whole thing, unless unless you do have something like a grain system. And of course, the way that Clay gets files over the network nowadays is more like a, a, a grain system. If it just said, oh, hey, here here's your answers, hash, ask me if you need the data, that could be work reasonably well. Um, and the other thing is, like, yeah, what, are, what are next requests used for right now? Uh, I think in, in, in practice, they all end up being molt nowadays. Um, uh, molt is just next, but with a, a whole set of changes. So mool is the same, yeah. except it's a set of pair and cat, uh, care and path, but all at the same case. And then um, yeah. uh, these are just map of care. I think and I remember molt was, added, molt was added for Ford Turbo, if I recall correctly. Yeah, something like that. And what what it does is it's it's next, but let me know when any of these changes that change instead of only when this specific right. one changes. Um, and th that's used in Gaul, for example, to say, okay, let me know when the built result of any of these apps changes. Right. Which is a fairly large request, it that's, feels like. Yeah. And it's nice you, to know yeah. because... Otherwise, you end up running agent migrations unnecessarily, potentially. Right, or or in Gaul, you you could, you could check and see. Check okay, it is it the same as before? Basically, you'd keep this cache in Gaul, right? Um, which would be annoying. Yeah, but yeah, it's it, it's yeah. definitely like this whole thing gets a lot simpler if you do that. So maybe it's worth it. I don't know, but this is how it works for now. Yeah, and what is what is many used for? Yeah, so many is worth understanding, um, but it's, it can only really be understood by how it's used. And even though it shows up in Rave, uh, don't ever call this from user space. Um, it's it's really just a clay to clay protocol. Um, okay. And it's used in one case which is this. This is the only place that many's are introduced. You're making a subscription. The subscription is going to a foreign ship. Yeah, because this checks if it's local. Uh, and so it's, it, 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 this is a foreign ship. We're making a subscription, or we're making a request. It's a sing request for send V. Send V is a dome. Dome, uh, you actually get this dome, which is th the same as the other, but with fewer caches. This is the, the dome that's in lull. Right. But like, the, do the dome that's in the center of the network. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, and that onk is always going to be empty when it's center of the network, but uh, it's still there for historical reasons. Um, and so basically, if you request a dome, the dome is like, all of the state in the app. So we, we switch modes entirely from a sort of request response to actually I want to sync down your desk so that I can answer everything synchronously after that. Um, and we do this partially because, I mean, like y y you could handle sen uh, sensing send Vs without doing that. Like you could have them just send the data and it would be, kind of okay but um you want that other mode anyways and so this is how we represent it really probably shouldn't be represented this way we probably should be doing many's explicitly or something like that but that that, that switches you into this this totally different mode where 
you're saying, yeah, download this entire thing. And you need this fairly often in, uh, uh, when we're doing OTAs, we do this all the time. Um, so that, cause once you have it locally like that, then you can start to answer, um, you can start to answer questions synchronously. And it also means that you have like that, that gives you all of the blobs and stuff that are associated with it. Instead of with a send X request, you're actually only going to get the specific file that they, that they sent and so on. Um, so, okay, so this is basically, this is used for downloading a whole desk. And, yeah. um, and when you download that whole desk, the many is, is what, a, a, it's many, um, it, it ends up being like a range of cases. Yeah, so it, uh, what is it, the does it just main go from thing the very that, beginning or from the last one that you have? Is that the idea? So it takes a moat, which is going to be a from case two case and then a path uh okay if you look at rave real quick we will give these both on the screen the lobes thing that's a cache and we can ignore that right for, for from this perspective the the actual request is you, you say whether you want uh to only get an answer at the uh at the okay I'll start with moat. So moat is y you say, I know everything up to this case already. So you, so you don't need to send me all the yeah. blobs. You don't need to send me all the old commits or whatever. I, I know everything up to here already. Um, I, uh, I want to know everything up to here. And I want it at, yeah. at this path, which I think is virtually always going to be FAS. And I don't know if it works if it's not FAS. Um, but in, okay. you, know, you, you could imagine it working. Um, and then track says, uh, if that's, if that's false, which is, which most of the time it's false, then that means, um, okay. So, so many, unlike all these other ones, gets more than one response potentially. Um, all these other ones will that's get one response and then the, the, that subscription's over. Um, many could, could, could get several. So if there's a foreign desk that's at revision 10 you know it up to revision 8 and you want to know up to revision 15 then you're going to send a request where from is 8 to is 15 and they're going to immediately respond by saying okay great here's number 10 and then when they change to number 11 they'll they'll send you number 11 when they change number 12 they'll, they'll send you number 12 um and if you have track set to true, then the difference is when you make that same request, your request for eight, when they're already at 10, they'll say, great, here's number nine. Now here's number 10. And they'll, they'll send those immediately after each other, but they'll, they'll give you each one in a row. They, they won't allow you to, they won't allow it to skip any. Okay. So Which, I guess all yeah. this stuff with many, maybe, all this stuff with many makes me think, why don't we just do this sort of thing um, uh, like one by one recursively, just like incrementing from where we are, right? Like why do we need to express over the network that well, you know, we need you... more than just one, just the next one and then do it again? Yeah, so in practice, what we do, for example, in Kiln, pretty much everywhere in Kiln, um, what we end up doing is we do a sing request for next, send Z yeah. or send Y or something of, of the next one. And then when that comes back, then we do a send V of that version. Actually it's, it's send W is what we use for the right. original one, I think. And then, and so that we, we expect to come back with exactly one response. So basically we, we, we do that in practice already. And so I think you're right that that many should be simplified to like it, it's still subtly different like it, it's still uh, different than sing uh, in the sense that the response you get basically you, you need to be able to supply to the publisher hey I already know it up to this version um, and so only give me from this version to this version but that's uh, 
that's much simpler than this idea of like you might get multiple responses and this might have to hang around um yeah all of that should go away and it should be something like actually it might be in liam's pr i forget if i got all the way to that point of of specking out a simpler version but it okay, should be cool. basically moat instead of like and well yeah so like the, the request should look somewhere but mm -hmm. uh it shouldn't have multiple responses or anything like that and you wouldn't need a yeah. cache like this yeah i'm really gonna feel like, like this whole this thing could be way simpler uh yeah yeah and and should be and i'm it, it's been super satisfying to simplify the areas that i have simplified but you can tell like this could be significantly simpler and it'd be super satisfying to do as long as you could be confident yeah, that, that you're not going to break anything. But I'm, I'm pretty confident that I could, that I could supply this stuff, uh, without breaking stuff. So, yeah. I mean, is there an invariant in clay that if you try to download a desk that you get all of the old revisions, like, is that something that's, uh, yeah, or? well, yeah. Everything assumes that a, if you have a dome, like all the lobes there point to something in your object store. All the tacos there point to commits in your object store. Um, well, that's not what I meant though. I meant like, do, is it assuming that um, like all of the old revisions are like filled in and have, is it like, is it possible to have like just the let uh, and the like map from path to lobe at the let, but not have anything earlier? Or is that impossible? Mm. Um, that's impossible right now. Um, Cause that's like a git clone depth one, right? Right. And yeah. so, so the, the, you like you can get halfway there by saying, um, give me all of the commits, but um, I'm not going to request any, any blobs that aren't, uh, that aren't in the head or an ancestor right, or like a, an ancestor of a Delta in the head or something like that. Um, and I'm, I'm going to fill those all in with tombstones. Um, that yeah. would be straightforward to, to support. Basically you'd need to like right now, the default, I think the default norm is to keep everything. Um, but you could yeah. set that to be delete everything or you could, uh, yeah, and ha have a way to set that you before you thing. exactly right exactly. and it, it will only ever download the latest and keep the latest but there's but right. there's absolutely no way of of uh not downloading uh old metadata like the metadata for old commits right yeah so that's the way it is it, it is right now and that wouldn't be too hard to change um you could say because especially because in, in in that context if you're looking for a commit you're almost certainly in the context of a desk and a ship and so you actually have an obvious place to ask for the data if you need it later on or if you like because yeah. because you know what the ship and desk name is um which is somewhat less true blobs, have... although could potentially be true in a lot of cases there too and i guess you need some sort of sense of ownership too right so that basically like if i have um you know, like if I somehow end up with only the latest revision, you know, revision seven of right. some desk, uh, then I have to know whether I can supply the earlier rev revisions there or whether that was like downloaded from some other desk. I guess right. we know this, right? It's just whether it's a foreign desk or domestic desk. And so like, if it's a foreign desk, like we can't write to it, we have to download it. Otherwise, we yeah, can write but to there's, it, but we there's potentially, there's potentially some answers that we can give. So in like to, you know, to give a little foreshadowing of what's in the foreign desks, we have this concept of a of limb, which is a pat DA and it's complete too. So that, so that's mm. like the latest state that we've synced down. And so right now the rule is any request before that we can answer. Um, yeah. And that but may not be it. the case if, if you say, yeah. well, actually I can only answer it between these ones and I can answer yeah. by version number here, but not by date because I don't know if there was another commit that I missed there or there's a little tombstone that leaves just the date behind so that I know how to answer those. There's there's various things you right. can do there. I like it, you, you could very reasonably have yeah. a policy that's something like, well, I don't 
store only, you know, I don't store only the head, but I also don't store all its ancestors. I only store the numbered revisions or I only store the labeled revisions or something like that. And then you have to be aware of, you know, what requests oh. you can or cannot answer with those. Yeah. Right. So that reminds me. So I remember hearing, I think you explained this to me at some point. And I'm not sure I ever really understood it. Um, but that like there can be effectively like commits that are on a desk, but that are not, that don't have an eon, don't have a revision number. Yeah. Or is it more just like in order to like, is that true? Or is it just that like there are commits that can be referenced by this desk and you need them in order to reconstruct a history or even like reconstruct deltas? Well, it depends on what you count as, as on that desk. Um, yeah. But so there, there are commits that may be in your ancestry that were never at the head of that uh of that desk there i believe it's the case that they always had to be at the head of some desk but that desk might be some foreign desk some foreign private desk that you don't know the name of and can't know the name of or whatever but if yeah. you so if you have a desk you merge in some other commit from anywhere it doesn't matter where it's from um the, you know there was your head was n the merge commit is n yeah. plus one. The other one that you merged in doesn't have a number on your desk. Um, but it is still in your parentage, right. right? Yeah, so basically n plus one points at this totally foreign desk and the previous revision uh, as right. its parents. Right. And so in order to get... Um, Well, that doesn't okay, but that doesn't necessarily imply anything about the blobs, right? Other than that, like there could be like intermediate delta blobs that are only from that, right? Um, like, yeah, I mean it. It, it, it doesn't imply a lot about the blobs. Uh, it you you might it, it might be reasonable to have a policy that's as simple as uh, don't tombstone anything on numbered commits, but not on. But 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 stuff that's like the you know some merge parent that came in from elsewhere, go ahead and tombstone those. It's kind of like a half yeah. squash almost, where you're like, yeah, this other stuff's here. I have the metadata for it, but I don't care what was right. in in that feature yeah, that branch or that whatever. Um, right. That would be actually a pretty reasonable default for a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that for me. Yeah. So. We were looking at rows. We'll, we'll we'll go more into the subscriber stuff when we talk about wake specifically, which will probably be another okay. session. Um, but that's what's in the requests. You know, it's the, the request plus a cache of of what you were working on before. Which it's a cache, but it's actually important because you uh you often can't regenerate these because we like can't do send a request in the past necessarily. So don't lose that, ah. but oh well. I, so that's what that's for. And then I guess like it, right. when the, the other question I have about the caching that's in the rove here is that the rove is used as part of a key yeah. in the cult. And so are we overwriting the cult to have different keys when we change the cache in the rove? Um, or do we only ever put the cache in when we first get that request? Let me remember. Let's see. So first of all, there's a dedupe one that exists to handle that. Um, yeah, actually, I think dedupe is the answer there. So basically, when we go through with a new request, we check and see if there's anything that's uh equivalent and the ways you can be equivalent is well obviously if there's a cache no cache doesn't matter use the one that has the most cache um uh which ddupe I, I think only gets called on uh new requests um yeah so sense. use the the existing one because it probably has a cache um the other way that you can be equivalent is um if you made a request for some you know for a date that matches the Aeon of an existing request, we, we collate those into a single request. Um, Let's see, okay. So, so it's like a form of like, so this dedupe is basically, it's sort of like a 
canonicalization of the requests, but it's more like yeah. path dependent than that. Depends on whether you have a request already. Yeah, um, it's it's it it's canonicalizing it, except that it, it doesn't produce a canonicalized form. It uh, it's more like you you match it to. Yeah, you're kind of. It's more like you're piggybacking off of some other request or right. Like, what, which what, what, what you would normally do, like the the traditional way to do something like this, is you canonicalize it, look up the canonical form to get the incidental data. Um, yeah. We do both of those in one step. Kind of a mess, but eh, it hasn't yeah. changed in years, and so yeah, it's probably, it's probably probably cleaned up at some point. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, and it probably can't although, be significantly simpler, but it's self-contained. It takes a wove, produces a wove, so it doesn't uh, yeah. contaminate anything else. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, actually, because most of clay canonicalizes to Eon, right? Just like internally, yes. typically you resolve something to an Eon, right, numerical revision, and then you do stuff. Right. Um, um, and this certainly does that uh, to the degree that it can. It can't canonicalize if it's something in the future, though. Like you can't canonicalize to an eon if it's something in the future, but yeah. Right. So that's the, yeah. the the case to eon here is trying to do that. Yeah, you know, there's an interesting thing here where the like, you know, if we think about clay, it, you know, let's say we rethought of it as, um, you know, publications, right? Where each desk is a publication in the like, the way that we just thought about in the offsite, right? Where it's like, you know, you're doing state replication from the publisher to the subscribers and you know, you've described how you can give a diff to the publication and then push the dish diff over the wire and maybe there are checkpoints too right but like um something interesting here is that you might think of like uh builds on a desk as like a another publication like another index yeah right or even maybe like any of these sort of sub subscriptions like higher level questions that we're asking Right. Um, right. And so that would allow you to do things like, you know, forward cash promotion from, from one revision to the next, right? It's like, well, if, if you already had the previous one, then, you know, it can use that information to like recalculate itself. So right. it's interesting sort of, it's interesting to me to think about it that way, because then basically, um, you know, if you did it that way, then let's, then basically Gaul would subscribe to you know, some sort of Ford build publication, right? That's like an index. I mean, uh, that arguably that's what it does, right? Like it, it uses all this machinery, yeah. seeing next and everything well, with it, with the care. Yeah. Well, but I guess what I'm thinking of though, is like, um, you know, that, that if you treated Ford as a, as an index like that, um, then it could, uh, it could know whether it needed to rebuild some file, right? Like a gall agent, and and then only like you know add a a new diff to to the index publication if it actually rebuilt it. Um, and instead of this would be an alternative to the sort of like more complex request type that we have here, right? Where like we're asking for a molt from Gaul, right? Gaul is asking for a molt so that it knows like, hey, did any of these things update? Right? Um, and then like... Yeah, so, so this does it... Slightly add... Right, like the, the, well, this does it at a very good. arm's length distance where it's like, di like, it's like, go ahead and actually build the whole new thing and then see if that changed and, and return based on that, which it doesn't have to be that arm's length. Yeah, it was just like you're kind of. This is a way, this would be a way of moving some of the complexity, I think, to be like, um, you know, instead of um, instead of having complexity in the request type the way we do here, you'd have a you'd have complexity in the like the relationship between different publications and indexes. Right. Just a, I was just sort of thinking out loud. Yeah. Because like, I was just thinking like it's hard to like it's actually it's like the mult feature here is it's a, actually it's a good feature and it's important and so n you know no matter how clay works we we do need something that effectively answers that question um and then right. just, so 
No, well, if you, if you did it as publications, could you answer that question? I, I think the answer is yes, but you'd, yeah, you'd, you'd do it through an index. Uh, you'd treat Ford as like an index. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably true. And it worth... Like, I, I always hesitate to go down that path with people who, who don't uh who don't yet understand clay like I, I think you do basically understand what's like most of the relevant stuff there but for people who, who, who don't have that I'm, I'm like well most of the things that you think are hard are already done and we already have those features uh but some of the things are not there and it's not going to be like it just feels like the most valuable thing is learn clay and then we'll talk about it so i'm excited to talk about it at some yeah. point um yeah. Right, because you actually really don't want to lose that malt feature. Right, because in practice, practice that's really don't often what you want. Yeah, you yeah. Don't you, need to. Right, and you don't want it's someone else to be able to keep track of. Like it, it's it, it is fairly natural to be able to ask someone, okay, just just tell me when it's, you know, let me know when it changed. Yeah. 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 Yep. So that's right. What... So like, while this looks looks a little you know funny, it it, it does it's doing right. something very important. Right. Right. There. Yeah. There's. It's the kind of thing where uh, it is a bit of a mess. Um, but the the ways in which it's a mess uh, are mostly incidental, and if you see something that looks like a mess. There, 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 there's two basic strategies you can take. One is try to whittle away the mess and leave what's good there. And the other is be like, well, let's just replace this with something simple. And um, yeah, they're both Generally try to whittle good, it away. Good, good strategy sometimes. But here, there are some really important decisions that were made and they were made over a long period of time and throwing them away and recreating them is going to give you that second system effect like really strongly where right. you're just going to have to relearn all yeah, this stuff. A, um, but there's also uh, a lot of stuff here this, that uh, is really doesn't need to be there. Ch Chesterton's what? Or, yeah. I often call this Chesterton. Yeah. It's like if you're, you know, reading a bunch of like, uh, you know, Java code and you see uh, like a sys that's standard out that flush somewhere, like, and you're not yeah. sure why it's there. Like, make sure you know why it's there before you remove it. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Um, but the first thing you have to do is is convince people that there is something worth doing there. Otherwise, eh, if you don't get time to change stuff and you tell them, well, I'm not going to let you change it until you understand it, but then they never get an understanding, it never changes, and then it looks like this for you know five years or whatever. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's what's in a row. It's weird that they're all in the... Uh, I'll bet that they were in the value of a map. I'll, I'll, I'll bet it was map of duct to request. And then it kind of felt more natural to put this stuff in yeah. the, in, in that side. And then it got flipped around. Uh, that's very likely what happened. And you know, whoever flipped it around was different than the sense. person who, who put this stuff in originally. And I, I know when I put that version in, I was like, well, where does the store of the ship that it goes back to? Oh, right there. I'll put it right next to it. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of that kind of, there's a lot of strings of deltas in here. Um, uh -huh. Right, so that's a rove, which is in yeah. a wove. Wove is the key to uh, the subscriber map. That's in. Yeah, I mean, it, it is right dome. for it to be a er, dog dog from from request to duck, right? Like that. That is yeah. actually sort of the correct way to do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, be, be, because so it, you can't it is not uncommon to have the same request, especially if you think of a ship like, you know, Zod. There's 100 ships that are looking for the next version of kids that should, you know, yep. that shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be checking, right. it shouldn't be running that 100 times each time anything changes. It should be running it once and then sending it to 100 people. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, uh, domestic desk state. We've looked at subscribers, looked at desk state. The only other two things here are permissions, which are map of path to rule, but should probably be a try. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, the rules are... I've never actually looked at this very closely, but so it's either a black list of people or a white list of people. Um, and that applies per path within it. Uh, it does not appear to apply per like revision or anything. So you can be like, you, you can see this subdirectory, but no other subdirectories. Um, and you'll see that across all revisions. Um, whom here yeah. is, I think yeah, this is either a ship or a first. named crew, right? Go ahead. Yeah. And I think this is still basically a, at the first revision of this, like the first yeah. kind of iteration of, of this system. Remember, um, right. uh, Mark wrote it um, two or three years ago. I think I like worked with him a little bit on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it works for the, for the basic, for, for the basic, just like, I want to make this desk public, this desk private, this desk private, except for the, yeah. this person, which that's the, the, the main thing you need. It, it is very unclear what you would do if, um, if you want to say, well, this person can see th these commits, but not these commits. Well, how, how can they sync that? Can they not sync that? They can only make individual requests of the network or like, I don't know. Yeah. And so this right. sidesteps a lot uh, of those questions. Right. And it's actually like, because of the way that the deltas work, unless we transform deltas over the wire, it's actually hard to imagine it, Like, unless we transform them all into directs, which we probably don't want to do. Um, then it's it's very hard to imagine limiting access to old commits because yeah. your current commit might just point back into old commits, and so when they download it, they still get all the data. Right, and like maybe I mean yeah, and there there's probably the answer there is if you're in that situation, then go ahead and turn it into a direct. Although they, they they may already have it as a delta locally, in which case it, it, you know they're not even going to request it from you. It's I, too, right? it is what because then, like, you know you're storing everything as deltas, and then like you have one subscriber that suddenly joins who wants to like who doesn't have access to the old one. Now you have to like convert right. them all. Right? Yeah, like yeah, there's there's some messy questions there, but what's here works well for for its purpose. Um, yeah, right. So that's the way we've done it here is actually sort of cleaner. It's like you don't get to say, you don't get to say anything about per commit right. stuff because it's just it's just too hard to enforce and not worth it. Right. Um, yeah. It looks like is, it, 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 it can be done. No. Uh, it would have to be like a layer on top of it. You, you can do get over SSH is a is an ob like is a common way to do it. Um, and so then like, yeah, if they have an SSH key, then they can get to anything on your commit server, like on, on, on your Git server. Yeah. Um, but that's, I mean, and that's like yeah, how so GitHub does person. it as well, even over HTTPS, like, but it's just like, yeah, you, you, you authenticate and then you can yeah. get to anything. If it's Git, GitHub has, you know, will, will intercept everything and decide GitHub's what, what you're going to do. Too, right? Say again. We're good. GitHub has SSH based support too. Um, yes, yes, but but I, mean, I just mean that they also yeah. have HTTPS. But if you're not using GitHub, it's yeah. usually SSH, um, unless it's on your yeah. local machine, in which case you right. So just actually, point to that. Right. So we have actually more fine grained permissions than Git already because we can say, yes. well, this ship gets access to this folder, um, as opposed to like right. The ship is allowed to log in. <laughs> Right, yeah. Yeah. Right. And then each each one can can be either a ship or you can indirect through the name of a group, um, which we'll see where those are defined. Yeah. But that's just I believe it's just a map of of name of a group to like set of ships. So you can yeah. uh, add and remove to a whole group at once. And it's I think we should probably change that from set of ship to that like um, that sort of sparse set data structure from old jail um, that has um, that lets you represent ranges mm. and yeah. I think like rank. Because one of the really yeah. common things you might want to do is say like uh, you know uh, like I'd not allow any comments to see something. Right, that's like a really right. common. Right, so are you can list. Are you you know, yeah. you can either blacklist all comets, which is going to be a long list, or whitelist all planets, which is 
a slightly less long list, but still long. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, it, you could also do right. something like, oh, you know what? My kid's desk is only available to people that I sponsor. You know, that's going to be yeah. mostly right. a range. It, I mean, at that point, actually, it's it's a little more than a range because it could be other ones that you end up sponsoring, which you could either add manually to this list or you could do the whole thing as just check with jail, whether I sponsor, like, you right. know, it, it, handle it explicitly that way. Lots of options. Yeah, you probably do want it to be check with jail at that point, which suggests that you might actually just want the permission mechanism to support some kind of indirection, right? Where it's like, well, whatever yeah. this app says, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, potentially. Um, uh, that's the most general. Uh, it's either that or you try to like collapse it down to some sort of data structure that's expressive enough, right? Um, to express like all the predicates you. Right. Uh, probably better to do it through an eight to to indirect it. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because it's really hard to to concretize that all the way. Although I don't know, maybe it's not like you. Because it really is like you want to do it by rank, you want to do it by subnet, you want to do it by, like there are only a few different dimensions that are really common. Right. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Then you yeah. have to have efficient diffing on that too. So in case you have like a fairly complex set of permissions, and you want to update that, you don't have to like recalculate all of that from scratch. Right. Um, Yep. So, anyways, that's what that's what permissions per desk looks like. Map a path to rule. Uh, read permissions, write permissions. Uh, for bar fuse, uh, we'll, we'll we'll go over how it gets used when we look at fuse. But it's basically um, if you want to fuse five desks together, you need to download them all first. Um, and so that's all this is storing is a map of the desks that you're in the middle of working on to the result of downloading them so that you can do the actual fuse in one event. Okay. It's kind of not great that you have to store temporary data here, but it's also, it's gotta get stored somewhere. Um, you could do it like, you could say, I'm actually gonna spin out a thread, especially now that threads are in con, it feels a little more natural to be like, I'm gonna run this thread that downloads these and produces the result. Eh, I don't know if that's any better. That's weird because threads could get killed and maybe you wanna be more careful than that. I don't know. I think I would need to understand views better before really commenting on this. All right, well, we'll, we'll get to that later then. Yeah. Um, so, Right, okay, so reviewing back raft, this is a whole state of clay. Uh, we looked at the the ring, which is the object store. We looked at the room, which is our, our local desks. That's map of desk to dojo, which is what we were just looking at. Subscribers, desk state, and so on. So that's all of the local, all the state about local desks. Hoi is gonna be pretty similar, but it's a foreign desks. Map of ship, it's all the, you know, all of our neighbors, well, all the neighbors that we've talked about clay stuff with, uh, to rung, rung is map of desk to read. So basically it's map of ship to map of desk to read. Read is a, uh, it shouldn't, like it's a prime target for cleanup um, because it's, it's doing two things that used to be the same and have like diverged and so, oh well. Uh, but this part should look familiar. It's a dojo. Um, and the only thing that it adds, so what? Is it okay? Is it exactly the same as a dojo? I can't remember if those are the same. Doesn't dojo it, have like a sixth field in there? It is exactly the same as, as dojo, I believe. Uh, wait. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But it really shouldn't be because from the perspective that we have approached it is this is a foreign ship. If it's a foreign ship, why do we have write permissions stored? We shouldn't have any. Why do we have yeah. bar fuse stored? We shouldn't because you can't fuse into a foreign desk. You can't write into a foreign right. desk in general. Um, the reason that it's done that way is read 
pulls dual duty as we we uh, normalize domestic desks and foreign desks into state in the D core, the DE core, which is confusing because okay. that's now what the tri core is called DE as well. So there's now ket DEs in here, but oh well. Um, and so we we say like okay you know if it's foreign or whatever we'll, we'll make a read out of it and then we'll use reads everywhere which is not how it should be what it what it should be is there should be a um we we should have the common state which is going to be cult dome mainly um and then uh there should be a buxen that's like if it's domestic then we have some of these permissions and the few stuff if it's foreign then we have uh then we have this concept of limb which I mentioned before which is what are yeah. we complete to and then right. we would also have uh, uh an outgoing request queue um so this is null if it's a domestic desk non null if it's a foreign desk which is another one where it's like why is that in read in your state it's weird but uh it's also notable okay. for being the a pattern that's used everywhere which is um uh, yeah it's the i forget yeah this pattern gets, gets used all over, um, oh. which is to say, basically, assert this is a foreign desk. There's a, there's a few places oh, yeah. where it's which done as like a what sig or something. Um, so basically, right. that that's how we tell when, when we do need to know. Yeah, like here as well. Um, and this, I mean, this when mostly we do for need TMI. to know. Uh, well, some of those are TMI. Some of them are well. Okay, the the assertions are probably mostly for TMI. I'm confusing myself with the regexes here. Okay. What sig ref? So like here we say, you know, I, I know that Celeste D is supposed to be putting the, like so supposed to be making us be able to think, I don't care if this is a foreign desk or a local desk, it's all the same. Um, but I actually do, do care in this case because if it's a local one, I want to give the response synchronously. If it's a foreign one, I want to give it asynchronously. Yeah. Here it's like, well, if it's a local one, then I no, I can uh, try and respond to this immediately. If it's a foreign one, then I go through this sequence. Here, it's like, well, um, if we're canceling a request and it's a local one, just delete it. If we're canceling a request and it's a foreign one, we need to tell them to delete it. And so uh, it just ends up... So, so how would you refactor this then? Uh, instead of relying on just checking unit rind, um, I would make the type for for the state would be this, and then the type for except the dome might have fewer caches, but maybe you leave it like that. Yeah. Uh, the type for for the other one would be like for um, for D uh, would be. Like it would be Colt, Dome, and then a Buxen of, I don't know what is it for, what a word for local can say, you know, but yeah, so local, and then that's going to say, re, er, I forget what the names of them were, but you know, read as regs, write as regs. Fizzed is melt, and if it's foreign, then it's gonna have reft is rind, limbed is pat da, or maybe you have pat da as as a common one, uh, and just do now for the other. But like, yeah, um, sure. And then you, if you want to check if it's local or foreign, you just check. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and otherwise you don't have to dispatch on it. Yeah. Right. Right, because a lot of it you really don't have to dispatch on it, which is convenient. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I just remembered why 
room is separate like that because if you look in raft you have room and your map of ship to rung mm. room used to be map of ship to room when we were multi-homed because you'd have multiple ships uh-huh. all with their clays mixed up and so you'd have a map of ship to room and each one would have a separate terminal duct and it was a mess i see that makes uh, sense right so yeah. we were in rung which is in reed and yeah so that's all the same stuff from from the dojo that we covered there's an outgoing request manager it's pretty simple um there's two kinds of requests which i mentioned before there's sing next and molt which expect a which which we call simple requests like and, and end up going in the simple cache well actually next and molt don't work over the network uh although i think liam has a pr open to fix those but uh so it's mainly you're requesting either a specific thing in a request response type way or you're syncing down all the data up to a certain date um and so this has a few things in here so first there's a, a counter for the request so that you get new bones for each one um uh We've also got map of duct to pat UD so that if you request, so that if you want to cancel something, uh, you, you can send a cancel on, on that duct and it'll know what the what the index number is. And so it can send that over the wire. Uh, that makes for, sense. For a bit, I, I thought you could get rid of FOD, but it's actually really hard to tell whether you can get rid of FOD because FOD is everywhere. Because What's the reason to have a the name of UD cache. here? Why not oh, well. like... R- sorry, rather than a what? What's the reason to have a pat UD here? Like what, the request index? Like why not just have why not, why not just use the duct itself? Yeah. Um I'm trying to remember like there's you know, you could misuse clay by sending another request on the same duct, and that wouldn't get recognized right now. And so mm. this this will guarantee that they'll still end up as as separate ones. The like that that's a post hoc reason. The the original reason, of course, is this is this predates uh, new aims. And so before new aims, you have to you had to keep track of these separately like that um, because you uh, because it, it didn't extend ducts over the wire the way the new aims does. Oh, interesting. Okay. I see. Huh. So, yeah, so maybe we could. Yeah. It might be reasonable to to get rid of that. Um, be worth looking at some point. But yeah. Um, yeah. And then there, there's two more things here. So when you make a request, you get an answer back. Um, that answer, we, we, we don't ever, like there's only one place where we give answers to to our to the people that ask us questions um and that's in wake and wake takes no arguments um and so any answers that we give have to have been put in our state somewhere um and for foreign requests for foreign simple requests like if you ask for a send y over the network or a send x or a send z or any of those as a, any kind of sing uh then those go into this simple cache which is a map of mood which is care case and path unit cage and when it's in there then wake can find it when it's iterating through all those wolves it's like it 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 knows to check in here and so it'll give the answer from there i think this leaks i don't think that this ever gets cleared um but you need to print it out in mass yeah i mean it's possible that it does get cleared when it gets read it's probably would be safe to do that I don't understand but why I it's don't there. think it does. Like uh, you explained it, but I don't. I don't really get it actually. Like, um... right. So, wake, which we'll go through in detail at some point in the future, um, is its basic structure is this. Um, take your list of, of subscriptions, which is a wove and a set of ducts. Yep. Um, Iterate through them and. 
supposed iterate to see through if them, anything. right, and see if see if there's anything that that we can fill. And so, for a subscription to a foreign desk, uh, for for a send sing request, the question is how can we know that we can fill that and how like how can we fill that um we can start trying to fill it by sending a warp but when when the writ comes back uh how does wake know that it can fill it um you could make wake take an argument where it's like here's some information i just learned to see if you can clear that out of here or anything but wake doesn't take any arguments um and so it has to go somewhere in our state so that wake can find it does it, but does it need to be persistent state or does it just need to be like something that this can be accessed um like does it persist across clay activations for some reason it does persist across clay activations in theory because, well, what if you uh, made the same request twice? Shouldn't have to go over the network again, right? Um, and and it does, it it does do it that way. Um, but it would be reasonable here. So here's where it gets read, right? Uh, you're you're doing try fill sub. If it's a sing, first just look it up in the hot cache. If it's there, give it the result. Which you could do is say, if it's there, give the result and delete it. And that would be probably fine. I think, in most cases at least. I mean, it would always really be fine. It's just, go ahead. I don't really understand what's causing the deferral between like hearing the response to something on this, like for a foreign desk. Yeah. Uh, um, like we made some requests there's some listener that we have locally on that request. And then when right. we get the response back, um, somehow we need to also cache that because there's something that's going to read it again later. That's what I don't get. Like, why, why don't we just, why can't Clay just um, you know, take the result and send it back to whoever it asked for? Um, because that violates the boundary that the only thing that answers anything is um i think it must be this one um is wake yeah take for an answer is what gets the responses um and so, so why doesn't that call wake or i don't know like <laughs> so what it does so when we get a rand it's it's a simple response, not a get up to date thing, and so we have all the data. We don't need to like ask for hashes or anything. Then we we say okay, if they gave us null, then whatever. Um, otherwise, we go ahead and validate the result. The result has its mood, the care case and path that it's associated with. We put it in the hash, and then we call wake. Is what we do. Sorry, we put it in the cache and then call it wake. Okay, so this does call wake. But yeah, it, so I guess... It does call wake. And so you could say, oh, no, actually, I'll just answer it here directly. Um, but... Well, I mean, it, I guess, like, what... You, you could, start you could to still keep some lines thing. because, like... Well, uh, I was thinking no, you wouldn't do that necessarily. I was thinking that basically, like, you would you would have wake also look at some sort of, um, uh, like, non-persistent state. Right, so that yeah, like, you could do that. You could still have the country, but you like, um, right? Or you could even do this, core, and then hot out ref is. I mean, you could even go to null if you want, right? Um, yeah. Uh, but although that, that still suggests that it's in your persistent state, even if it ends up being null, which doesn't need to be. Yeah, you could have wake take an argument that is like a it's not a hint so much as a um it's just like some temporary data that you're not going to remember remember after that um that that can work it's it it violates like so one one of the areas where you have potentially a lot of risk here is like and, and where where okay where you have potentially a very large state machine that you want to collapse into a narrow waste 
is subscription yeah. results. Because, for example, if yeah. if you make a request for a send X at some at some point in the past, um, and you haven't got a response on it, but you also made a request that gets you uh, the sync type request that gets you fully up to date. When that sync request finishes, you should get a response to your send X request in the past immediately. Not because it's not part of a bigger request. Yeah, it, it, it was part of that. You have enough information to give the answer, so you should give the answer immediately. Not wait until they they answer you with the send X. Maybe they won't even do it because it's too big or whatever, and so they're like, it's not going to happen. Um, and so that kind of edge case is is no problem at all if you don't think of it as you know if you think of it as wake doesn't take any arguments um and you just say well in wake we have try fill sub try fill sub says well if it's in this cache use it if it's not in the cache that doesn't mean we don't have it if it if it's not in the cache then um then we go and see if we have you know it's somewhere here there's a check of limb i forget where it is it, it's in case aeon be like oh well do we know about that aeon we know about that aeon can we read from that if we can't read from it, then nothing. But if we can read from it, then give the response. And so it it, it makes that problem like a, a fairly low dimension problem. It's still like it's like medium dimension problem. Um, but you you can ask, okay, if I need this request and I can look at all my state, what uh, uh, you know how how could I possibly have that answer? um yeah and, and you go down the list and yeah like it's it's very similar to say actually it's not in this cache it's in an argument that came into wake and that's fine and maybe oh. that's like it, it's, it could it's, be the... it's fairly clean to say it's you know a hint of, of temporary well i guess what i was thinking I is know, basically yeah. like not exactly a hint it's that like instead of wake looking only at your persistent state wake would be you know in some like i mean you could do it as an argument but, or but I think more what I was thinking is that like, you know, if you've that, you know, that core that Wake is in also has access to, mm, um, right. you know, a, a piece of transient state, but that was used to instantiate the core. Right. Like like that, like your list it, of moves, for example, that you're building up. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's like okay, right also has. Yeah. You know, if you heard, if you just heard a response, right, and that's the context that you're in, uh, then Wake can also look at like, well, did this response you just hear does that satisfy any subscriptions? Right, and so it's just yeah. another place to look. Um, yeah, and as opposed to something configurable, right? And, and then it's just like, right. yeah, you're, you still just have the same kind of architecture, which I do think is clean. Of like, mm-hmm. all right, you have you have all your stuff, all the places where you might want to look for fulfilling a response, and then you just say check, right? Run wake, and it just looks everywhere. Um, yeah. And that does seem you know more bulletproof than a lot of other ways of doing it. Um, uh, but you know, there's no limitation that that has to only read from persistent state, right? Like the way you construct right. that context, way it look, like reads from, could be anything. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, the that, benefit that would be a pretty reasonable. That, to me. Go ahead. Yeah, the benefit of doing that way is that then you don't have to manage the. Per, you don't have an extra piece of persistent state to manage, mm-hmm. right? right? That could accumulate uh, or, you know. Yeah, I mean, it might be leaking right now, and yeah, right. yeah. Um, and, well, and the other thing is, it's. I think it's got cages in there, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it's, it's, so it's got cages in there. So Sorry, I, 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 yeah. Uh, I I think we go ahead and probably kill it on upgrade. I imagine it's it's got to get killed somewhere, right? Uh, <laughs> read. It doesn't go and stay. Maybe in load. I'm I'm sure those. I mean, yeah, those have to disappear somewhere, surely. But not here. So I don't know. When someone changes the type of type, they're probably gonna be like, "Oh, I need to explicitly throw those away." Which, yeah. Which, which it's fine to throw them away because they're a cache. But it, you know, they probably should be, yeah, handled more explicitly. Yep. So that's what the simple cache is. That's how responses to simple requests come from. Nice. Um, is is for it's something, sync requests. It would be right? nice to actually go to the state machine in this probably in, in, a, in a later later session. For for like um a, uh like wake you mean and that whole sequence? Uh no for, for like just for managing foreign requests and like 
yeah uh, actually performing them and the hearing responses and tracking these numbers and stuff but yeah like I, I had I had listed on one of these paragraph or one of these like chapters as uh individual reads or sorry subscriptions which which I had wake as the like entry point for that but uh that would be a good time to right after that be like okay now how does the foreign stuff um layer over that yeah yeah cool yeah um so bomb here is is for uh uh sync type requests like many type requests uh which is where you you get a naco you might have already been in the middle of one when you get another naco so it's fine like so we make a queue of them and we say basically okay i have some date oh yeah we should look at that one right so we we make a, a we're we're trying to sync down a dome over the network basically and so uh we get you know something as let so the highest revision that we're at the uh numbered revisions and then a set of commits which you can then go ahead and either hash or trust the hash i forget which it does um to to add those to your object store so, so these should be the ones that are referred to in gar and then in the past we would also get a set of blobs uh plop just means uh, unvalidated blob in practice that's always null now because the publisher doesn't know on their own which ones they should send to you uh they they're they would have to send too many usually and so uh, now that's null and you request them afterwards um okay and so this uh, has a slightly different invariance than the dome. In particular, this is only going to show the new IDs. So if you remember, when you make that request, you say from this revision to this revision. So it's only going to show you the, you know, if, if you asked for from 8 to 15, then it's going to show you from 8 to 15, not the ones before 8, because you presumably already have those. And the commits in here are going to be only the ones that you don't already have or that you didn't that you said you didn't have yet um okay. yeah so that's the response that comes over the wire when you're trying to get up to date and then update state is uh the state for for a state machine that says let's go through and this used to be list lobe until the um uh, tombstoning stuff where it's so it's, it's a state okay. machine that, that says these are the lobes that I need to download and um, these are the ones I already have yeah, that I have downloaded so far yeah sort of except we actually put them directly into the ring normally because um, that means if you're downloading like the some of the same blocks yeah, for two different it, ones it'll, then it'll it'll save time um, but you can't necessarily put stuff directly in there. Basically, if you download a Delta, you can't put it directly in there because it doesn't have a parent necessarily. And so you just put it in here and then put it, and then you need it in, in at the end. Um, Makes sense. That's the request. That's the duct that it came, that you're operating on. So you can make the same request. So you make all your requests in the same duct. Uh, the yep. difference here with clay tombstoning is you don't have just a single list of lobes. You actually have two because uh, you want to handle it differently if they're at the top revision versus if they're not. Because if they're at the top revision, then you want to assert that it's not a tombstone uh, because you just want to crash out of this if it um, if they're trying to give you a tombstone for the top because that violates our invariant. Um, otherwise, well, so it, if, if it's at the top or... It's a delta whose parent is a, is, is a tombstone. Same thing. Um, so th these are ones where you have to insist that you get one that's not tombstoned. These are other ones that you're going to request because it matches your policy to request them. But uh, if you end up with a tombstone there, yeah, it's not the end of the world. And it should, and I, I believe it does say, if your policy doesn't... Actually, I'm not sure if it does. I have to check. Um... If your policy doesn't need these, then it shouldn't even try to download them. I have to check whether it does that. I think it might not. Yeah, I don't think it does. Oh, hello.
Okay. Yeah. So that's the request manager. Understanding the state machines involved, yeah, is is how you truly understand that. But for foreign desks, all the state related to that stuff is in the request, is in ref. Um, and other than that, and this limb concept, they're basically the same as local desks, except that you can't fill in stuff. Oh, and that yeah. the dome, uh, that on cache is going to be empty. It's guaranteed to be full if it's local and empty if it's foreign. Maybe it should yeah. be a unit or something, or you should have a concept of a local dome or, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Right. Yeah. Mosque. Kirk. That's <laughs> yeah, a, like... a four letter word. <laughs> uh right or i mean and we've we've also talked about having you know being able to run builds out of um you know uh like local copies of foreign desks maybe even like build agents from there run agents from there directly yeah um in right. which case we probably maybe we'd want a knock kind of cache there um yeah maybe it not, may not be exactly an onk, but something like that could potentially you would, you would at least want a forward cache, I think. You probably actually don't need an onk. Um, yeah, and you might want a mime cache if if you're able to mount them locally. And you know, who knows? Uh, it's also possible the right. mime cache might be superfluous now that we have a forward cache. No, no, because the, no, the forward cache not. doesn't catch that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a little bit different. There's potential uh, stuff to. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, we should also talk about the mime, the mime interaction, like the whole ergo flow at some point, because I, yeah. I want to understand that a little bit better, partially because uh, one thing I think we should do with clay is at some point kind of separate uh, like unvalidated flows from validated ones. Um, flows in the sense of like, I imported a bunch of data from my, you know, from Unix, and I want to use this as Dropbox, right? Uh, and you know that's not necessarily the same like piece of functionality as like oh I, here's a a desk that has like assist.kelvin in it and can be built into a bunch of agents that I can install right it's like kind of a different idea right um, and uh, right right and so we, we have you know kind of two problems in two different directions from this right now really like, on the one hand you know if you want to if you have some new kind of file in there, you have to like make a mark and that mark doesn't really do much. And so, you know, it's like hard to pull in files. And then also like, you know, for even for files that you might, uh, well, maybe there's not only a problem in one direction, which is like, uh, you end up just, you know, not being able to pull in arbitrary data and send it to somebody else's ship. And instead you have to write sort of like a fake mark that just pretends to understand the data right um so yeah i guess yeah but then there, there's issues with like how would you actually store that and you know. yeah so but yeah, in order to, to in understand how to improve that we'd have to look at that part of the system right yep okay we're getting close now to the end of the data structures um so raft we looked at the object store which are domestic desks foreign desks rung as a read we just looked at that it's like a lot like a dojo with a request manager so that's these three main ones there's a few other small pieces of state mon map of term to beam which is your mount your mount points we generally kind of like in practice we usually use it as a map of term to desk uh but you really should be able to mount stuff from other ships you should be able to mount stuff from other versions you should be able to mount sub paths i actually think you can mount sub paths i believe i haven't tried that i think in a long time. you can yeah i haven't tried in a long time either but yeah um but what that, mean that feels correct ship? uh mounts of another ship is it would be a read only one uh, but it'd be very convenient if you wanted to just be like, what's Zod's kids right now? No, I'll just so you'd it. like mount that, like Zod have kids locally, something like that? 
well, whatever term you, you want to give it, yeah, and, and by yeah. by convention, you might use do Zod have kids or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We do, probably don't use Sig Zod right. because it'll confuse Unix systems. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that works about how, how you'd expect. Uh, sync duct, it's the one that you should be sending ergos on. I don't know if that's enforced anymore. It's an old pattern. Um, permission groups, okay. just just a map of right. yeah, yeah. Permission That's group name right. to set chips. Yeah. Right. You could call that a jug a patia to ship, but crew is probably used in other places. So that's this is probably more accurate, really. Especially because the crew maybe shouldn't just be a set of ships in the future. Um, and then yeah. pud pending update. This is used exclusively for. Uh, when you make an upgrade to uh, make a a write to the sys directory of the base desk because uh you might have rewritten or might, might have changed clay or this something in the standard library above clay um and so we delay the actual commit and we go ahead and send that to arvo say go ahead and upgrade everything and potentially even upgrading clay and then we run the commit again. And so this is just the arguments yep. to park, which is the narrow ways that all uh, all desk writes go through. And that's it. Yep. All right. That's all the data structures, huh? That's all the data. At least for the state. Well, for the state, yes. We, we haven't gone through... You probably yeah, are familiar the with paper them, paper, but like, like commit the tasks yeah. or whatever. And yeah. yeah. Um, but most of them are variations on that, right? Like warp yeah. requests, there are going to be variations on the request that get stored. Uh, you know, the input to a, uh, to, to park is a Yoki, which is a lot like a Yaki, except it might be a little bit simpler. You know, it's, it's an each of yeah. Yuki Yaki, right? Um, but, you know, if you look at most of these, uh, that's lol. Um, if you look at most of these, we've looked at, you know, not we haven't looked at Dork yet or Ford Cash, but the rest of them just about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've at least gone through the whole state, I think. Yeah, right. Yes. Maybe not the Ford Cash, Mime Cash, but yeah. We've yeah. Kind of I mean, the, the MIME cache date wise is just pat, map of path the MIME. The Ford cache, yeah, that's worth covering separately. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a good stopping point uh, if you're feeling like we're like, at yeah, that point. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, and we, and we can, yeah. That's, that's probably going to be the longest out of all the different sections, um, and it's the most foundational. Yeah, but uh, and and then everything else is yeah. I mean, it's going to cover individual reads, subscriptions. That's a little bit involved, but like not that bad. We already covered some of it here. Receiving foreign data. Oh yeah, I, I actually had that as a separate um, uh, chapter. Forward itself, writing to a desk with Park merges. You can actually go straight to merges if you want. Like that one, uh, it's. It, it was such a mess and now it reduces to this which a merge result is basically just a commit uh essentially and so th this is now a function that's just it accepts two commits and produces maybe a new commit which is like ah yes that is what a merge is well it accepts two commits and a merge strategy and produces yeah. a new one and you could see how you could extend that you could even extend that by saying you know, here's a directory that you you put files in there or here, you know, and that gives you new merge strategy types or something. Like there's all kinds of ways if, if you want to kick out because there's the whole yeah. question about like, should mergers really be in the, in clay or should they be in the runtime or sorry, should they be in user space? And it's like, well, it's convenient for them to be in clay kind of, but also you really like there isn't, I don't know that there's a, Kelvin versionable list of merge strategies, so maybe that's the boundary you do, or I don't know. Lots of options. Right. We'll get to all that. 
Sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thanks for this. Catch you next time. All right. Yeah. I'll see you. Stop see you. Recording.